guys, so I just finished up a coffee table build. It's actually in the car right now, and I can't wait to take it home and see how it looks. But this was a fun one. I It's actually the first thing I've really made in the workshop since I've been there. There's so much to choose from, and the funniest thing is this coffee table build was pretty much the most simple tools that I could use. But it was just fun to finally make something and have it kind of in progress somewhere outside of the house. And so that was a big change for me. But this coffee table kind of came from being inspired by one I saw on CB2. It was a concrete, really organic, smooth top coffee table that I've liked for a long time, but it didn't work for our space. It was too large, too tall, and also really heavy. And I thought with a kid that's about walking, he would pull himself up on it, and some of the reviews said it was unstable. So I was looking to make kind of a similar organic shape. It wasn't a complete like copy of it, but I had some of this material. It was a concrete. Um, we had used it for to float over our fireplace when we did a fireplace renovation and we ended up not using it, but I had this stuff on hand. It was by Ardex. It was this white pre-mixed kind of feather light powder that you could use as a top coat. It's actually more for an underlayment, but I wanted to kind of try it out on this. And so I was experimenting with that as well as it was my first time using um, tambour, which is the slatted wood material that you see kind of in furniture making, on cabinets, sometimes on doors. So these were kind of the two materials I wanted to play around with, and I also wanted it to have like a kidney bean shape, similar to what you've seen in mid-century design. And that was kind of where I started. I also wanted it to be somewhat lightweight, and then the best thing about when you make your own table or furniture is you can do the dimensions to fit your needs. So last summer we bought this low couch, which was different from the one we had before. And I can't say we really like it. It's it's like cozy when you're laying and lounging on it. But one thing is it's been impossible to find a coffee table for it. So we've had this little ottoman in front of it, but we really missed having somewhere to set drinks on or the kids like to play around with a coffee table. So um, that's kind of where I started. And I ended up going with uh, the cheapest MDF material because I was going to be covering it with this concrete and it was all just experimental and I used the the jigsaw just to cut out a shape that I had hand traced and I cut the jigsaw out and I had all intentions of routing the edge to make it smoothed over but I was really trying not to let anything stop me from progressing with this project and the day I was doing that all the routers were taken so I work in a workshop where we share tools and there's two routers in there I think they were both being used or one was misplaced. Either way, I just decided not to do it. So I can see the things on the finished table that I'm like, oh, I wish I would have had a router just to smooth over the shape. I think it would have kind of gave it that look that I was going for just a little bit smoother and more rounded. And then I primed the MDF just before I put the the cement over it. And then I just mixed the Ardex product as it said through the packaging and consistency. I've used this product once before. And I had a really hard time getting the consistency of how I wanted it. This time around, it mixed up exactly. So I don't know. I had read somewhere that the temperature of the water could make a change. So I used cold water like I had heard recommended. And it worked great. So I'm wondering if warm water makes it set up too fast and it turns rock hard. Because this actually was the opposite problem I had at first. It was too runny. Um, too, it wasn't setting up fast enough for me to put on. So I mixed it a couple times just kind of playing around with how it set up because it was like cake batter, but I also didn't want the cake batter to really move. I wanted it to kind of layer and be thick enough to where it looked like concrete. My, my goal was that it would somewhat kind of look like similar to a poured concrete or a concrete finish. And then from there, I did two coats. I let one coat dry overnight and I did two coats on that. And that was pretty much setting up the top. Um, I did sand in between coats just to get some of the ridges out from where I had um, used the putty knife. I also found that I had this magic trowel on hand from doing drywall. I actually really love doing drywall and in our home when we moved in it had a lot of rough kind of I call them cottage cheese textured walls and so I had gone through and skim coated it so I definitely had some experience with using like a skim coat and so I had a magic trowel on hand and I actually used that to do this, the final coat of the concrete. And I thought it worked out pretty good. 
and I would definitely try that again. I just think I could kind of still see some stuff. So the, the fine sanding worked. On the final coat, I also used an orbital sander just to give it like one more smooth. It still felt really rough, so to give it one more smooth. I don't know if I would do that again if I use this product again because I do feel like I noticed everything that I sanded. So I used the finest grit paper, but I just feel like I kind of noticed that. But um, I was pretty happy with how it came out. So then I moved on to the legs. And for the legs, kind of a good or bad thing we'll find out when I use it. But I wanted it to be lightweight so that we could move it around. Because if the kids are setting up a train in the living room with the rug, I want the coffee table just to be able to lift it up. And I thought about if I poured it with concrete, the legs and the top, it would be something that I don't think I could lift maybe on my own. So I went with these pre-cut, um, just PVC pipe. So I bought three of them and I ended up, I ended up using all three. I wanted to get away with just doing three, but I did buy a fourth one for my husband because he was like, tables have four legs, but I'm like, no, I've seen coffee tables have three legs. I'm going to make it stand. So that also we will see as the kids start playing around if three legs worked. But And then the tambour material. I didn't really couldn't really source it online. And I ended up coming across on Home Depot a pole wrap. So picture like a basement and you have a pole sticking out through the basement. They sell a product called pole wrap. And it's the dimensions of it. So it's eight feet or nine feet tall by 16 inches or 14 inches wide. And you can wrap the pole and have this nice finished look to it. So I got this idea that I could buy this product and then cut it down to make legs. And it ended up working out fantastically for that. Um, I just basically chopped it down to the dimensions I needed. And I did, you can just use a scoring knife to take off the actual width of it. And that worked out great. And I just, once I assembled everything, I did put a clear coat on those just to keep it in case water got on it or just to make it a little smoother. I just did a, a like a rub on oil for that. And then I did use a concrete sealer once I finished the concrete top. And um, both of those took a couple hours to dry. And then I did some a second and a third coat on the concrete. And then I think I only did two or three coats on the wood. And then once it was dry, then I assembled it the next day. Yeah, I ended up going with Gorilla Glue. I'm a big fan of liquid nails because a lot of my backgrounds in like doing house projects and so it's a construction adhesive, but I thought I'd go with Gorilla Glue because it's clear and it sets up pretty fast. Although I didn't feel like that today when I was messing with it. So I, I'm really curious if it will hold up. I, I'll, I kind of will um, check it out within the next week if it's holding up because I felt like it did not set up as fast as I wanted it to. It takes about two minutes to get it tacky, but then even after two minutes, it wasn't holding in rock solid. So um, after about four hours, it finally set up and the, you could pick it up and the table was solid. The legs, the tambour material around the, the pipes created the legs and then I just set the top on it with um, the adhesive in between. And so once I picked it up, everything stayed together. But I'm curious as I move the table around how that all holds together because I just didn't feel like it felt as strong as liquid nails. So um, things I would change, I might adjust the adhesive a, li a little bit. I would definitely route that edge. And then um, just a smooth finish on that concrete was something that I'd probably change around with the troweling and the sanding. But it's really cool. I love the way it looks. I, I just am so into those organic shapes right now. And with kids, it's even better because it doesn't have any straight square edges. So yeah, let's go check what it looks like in... Thanks for watching the video. I love how this coffee table turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed watching my first build in my new workshop and catch me on the next one.